a quick revision video on buffer solutions. So we'll start with the definition. A buffer contains a system which minimizes pH changes on the addition of small amounts of an acid or a base. Obviously, if you add a large amount of acid or a large amount of base, the buffer system wouldn't be able to cope and the pH would change quite significantly. So how do you make buffers? So we can make acidic buffers. So these buffer the pH below seven using a weak acid. So for example, ethanoic acid and a salt of the weak acid. So the one I've chosen there is sodium ethanoate. The important thing is that it contains this ion here, this negative ion here. You can also make an acidic buffer if you use an excess of the weak acid and a strong alkali. So if you imagine if you reacted an excess amount of ethanoic acid with sodium hydroxide, you would make sodium ethanoate and water. At the end of that reaction, because the acid's in excess, what would you actually have in the beaker? You would have some leftover ethanoic acid and you would have the salt and the water as well. And so you can see you've actually got the key ingredients for the buffer the weak acid and the salt of the weak acid. So how do they work? So there's the buffer system from the previous slide. So if you add a small amount of acid or H plus ions, you're going to increase the concentration of the H plus ions. And so the ethanoid ions are going to combine with them and shift the equilibrium over to the left. And that will restore the pH roughly to where it was. If you add a small amount of base, well the base is going to do the opposite thing, it's going to remove the H plus ions and so the weak acid needs to dissociate more and replace the lost H plus ions and so the equilibrium shifts to the right. How do we calculate pH for buffers? So I've got this silly word to help remember, casid over salt. So the formula for calculating the H plus of a buffer solution is equal to the Ka, the acid dissociation constant of the weak acid, multiplied by the concentration of the acid at equilibrium and the salt concentration at equilibrium. And obviously once you know the H plus concentration, pH is just minus log of that. So we need to know the Ka value for the weak acid. Now they may give you the pKa value. So to get the Ka, it's just 10 to the minus pKa. And we also need to know the equilibrium concentrations of the acid and salt. So an easy question would give you the equilibrium concentrations of the acid and salt, and obviously the Ka value. More difficult calculations would get you to calculate the moles of acid and salt present after an excess of a weak acid and a base had reacted. And then once you've got the moles, you would need to convert them into concentrations in moles per decimeter cubed using the total volume of the solution. And obviously once you know those, it goes into the acid over salt equation and then minus log to get pH. Some questions ask you to calculate the acid to salt ratio. So that's basically the relative concentrations of the acid compared to the salt. So again, there's the acid over salt equation. So the acid to salt ratio is this part here. So all I've done is I've taken Ka over the other side and I'm dividing by Ka. So acid to salt ratio is equal to the H plus concentration divided by the Ka of the weak acid. Now remember they could give you the pH of the buffer so you would need to convert that to an H plus concentration so H plus concentration is 10 to the minus pH or they might give you the pKa of the weak acid that's in the buffer and you would need to calculate Ka from 10 to the minus pKa. So we'll finish with the control of blood pH. So blood pH is maintained between those values by a buffer system containing carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate ions. So the equilibrium that's at work is this one here. So if there was an increase in H plus ions in the blood, so the blood's becoming too acidic, the pH is dropping, 
then the H plus ions, the extra H plus ions, combined with the hydrogen carbonate ions, send the equilibrium over to the left. Now, to prevent a buildup of carbonic acid in the blood, that would then dissociate into water and carbon dioxide, and you would breathe that out. If the opposite happens and there's a decrease in H plus ions in the blood, then the carbonic acid dissociates more and basically replaces those lost H plus ions. So the equilibrium shifts to the right now. And finally, the names for these two conditions, if your blood pH falls below the 7.35 limit, it's becoming too acidic, that's called acidosis. And if it goes above the 7.45 limit, it's becoming too alkaline, it's called alkalosis.